Hi there guys, welcome to issue number 47. So I'm a week behind, however, I do have this week's issue, so I'll be putting this out there just a few hours after this one goes live. So what have we got this week? Space Marine Land Speeder. So we've got transparent base and a couple of sprues. So let's tear through the magazine and then we'll build this. Okay. Space Marine Land Speeder, Land Speeder Weapons, and Heralds of Nurgle. Ah, same damn issue as last week's. As last week's copy, ripping the pages. See if we can fix this before we carry on. Cool, okay. Right, and this issue, this issue is all about speed with your new Land Speeder features featured throughout. These vehicles can bring a wide range of weapons to the battlefield and they can use their great speed to attack almost any target on the tabletop. One of the best things about the Warhammer 40,000 hobby is customizing your units to suit what you like best. And your land speeder has lots of weapon options to choose from. You can pick these weapons, you can pick the weapons you think look the best, are the most exciting to tell a story with, would be fun to paint, or have the best rules. Whatever you choose, you'll soon have some very mobile support for your ultramarines. Happy hobbying. Okay, so we've got some, on the Nurgle side, we've got some bloat drones. We've got um, the blight hauler. So now we're adding some speed into the space marines. And that will continue next week with the uh, space marine bikes. Okay, anyway, land speeder, fast and versatile land speeders can strike nearly anywhere. Land speeder war gear, as usual. The skies of flame land speeders of the Raven Guard attack the Tau Empire. Heralds of Nurgle discover the disgusting spoilpox scriveners and sloppity bile pipers who are amongst the strangers of Nurgle's herald. Then how to build it? How to how to sorry? Then how to build our speeder? How to paint it? Rules mission thirty one: War in the skies. Your new land speeder hunts a photoed blow droner in his exciting new mission. And then data sheet for a land speeder. Okay, so the land speeder. Land speeders are swift vehicles that use anti-gravity technology to propel themselves above the battlefield at breakneck speed. Raining fire down upon the enemies of the Imperium. With a space marine pilot at the controls, they are able to perform breathtaking manoeuvres. Land speeders can accomplish a variety of battlefield objectives ranging from reconnaissance and scout deployments to tank hunting and other seek and destroy missions. Though lightly armoured, land speeders are versatile and able to carry a range of devastating weapons. Okay. Then we've got our war gear. So on here, some of the options we're going to have available is, well, obviously, anti-grav plates, proximity sensor, uh, assault cannons, augury probe, whatever that is, a heavy bolter, a typhoon missile launcher. So that's good and explains all of those things here. Okay, 40k battles 22, the skies are flame. Brother Cryan Vrax hands danced across his land speeders controls with practic practiced ease. He was flanked on either side by another of the Raven Guard's land speeder craft, each piloted by, fellow by a fellow battle brother. Their task was simple, support the ground troops below and break a hole in the enemy lines. The trio of vehicles emerged from a cloud of smoke and flame directly above the enemy's defensive positions and swept down upon the enemy like a bird of prey. So that's good. This is all to do with battles against the Tower Empire. Okay, so now, Demons of Nurgle. Heralds of Nurgle. Heralds of Nurgle are the demons who have attracted the attention of the Plague God and have been granted strange and disgusting powers. They use these unholy abilities to empower their allies and spread Nurgle's diseases across the vastness of reality. Okay, that's good. Right, then we've got how to build our land speeder. Then we've got how to paint it, which looks good. It's actually quite advanced in the painting by the time you finish, just with the paints we've got so far. Okay, and then it's got our different war gear options as well. So we've got the multi-melter, the assault cannon, and a heavy flamer. I will probably go multi-melter on, uh, on my one. Okay, War in the Skies, Rules Mission 31. Kalon's towering factories were once served by giant haulers, 
bringing raw materials to the foundations and ferrying finished products to the orbital shipyards. Now these vast transit routes are mostly blocked by rubble and fallen buildings or under the firm control of advanced death guard. Okay. So, aerial superiority. We have got one of the larger cargo routes through the city of Kalon currently serves as the main ultramarine's ground transport route. Death Guard have ambushed the convoy along this route. The Death Guard lie in wait to ambush the ultramarine, ultramarines attempting to secure any survivors and damaged vehicles. So deployment on both sides. Deployment on both sides. Um, and we're using both mats again. We've got the Death Guard are the Noxious Blight Bringer, Five Plague Marines, Five. Sorry, yeah, Five Plague Marines, another Five Plague Marines, the Floated Bloat Drone, and 12 Poxwalkers up against a Chaplain, Five Intercessors, Five Reavers, Five Scouts, and our Land Speeder. Victory conditions are eliminating the, fly, the enemy's flying unit, two victory points. Each objective held at the end of the game is worth a victory point. Eliminating the enemy warlord is one victory point. To hold an objective, you must have more models than the enemy within three inches. And it lasts for five battle rounds. Cool. Okay. So that's it. So what have we got coming up? Next issue, which is coming up in a couple of hours after this goes live, is Space Marine Bikes. The following week, we've got more paints. So we've got Augury and Camo, more Dawnstone, more I believe we've had some of that before, and Calgar Blue. Um, and it talks about highlights with the new, new layer paints, the Land Riders, the Black Crusaders. So that's it. Right, let's make up our Land Speeder and take a look. Okay, so there we go. It was fairly difficult to assemble, probably about, I'd say, 45 minutes. Something like that. But um, it's a cool model. It was quite challenging in terms of uh, not having numbered sprues and that kind of thing and just using the diagrams to make sure you had the right pieces and that. But it wasn't too difficult to work out. But I do like it. It's a cool model. Right, so that's it for this week. Well, I say this week, episode 48 is going to be hot on the heels of this one. So, so if you see this one go up, expect the next one very soon. See you later.